Well, what's up? KLC, the drum major, you hear me? Beats by the pound medicine men. You know, here to represent so slim. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it popping. Boom. Yeah. What's up? Now what you about to like see is up. how I do it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Magnolia Brown, so just slim to the bone. It don't stop. Who's the realest? Tonight we're doing some associates with my stepson. I love him. Ms. Linda, I love him. I'm Doug Joseph. You know what I'm saying? All the running board, alloys, you know what I'm saying? I don't f that chrome bitch, you know what I'm Chrome get played out like chrome, you feel me? So I flip the script, I wear gold, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how we doing it. Well, I met Magnolia, you know. I used to always, um, me and Will, 3-9 Posse, Dalt, Mooshat, um, used to always DJ in all the uptown projects, and, but we was mainly in the Magnolia the most, so we, uh, you know, was up there DJing, you know, that's when Slim was bouncing first. And um, he had came, grabbed the mic, but he didn't want to be seen, so, um, he kind of stumped down behind the turntables and I pulled him up. And he, Cause when I was rocking, he was doing his thing, but people didn't get to see him. So they thought it was a record till he came up and they saw it was slim, you know? So he started going in and after that, I said, look, what we gonna do is um, come by me on the parkway and uh, we gonna start making real records. So the slim was cutting hair on his mama porch on off of Tyler Donald Street. And I might have got a haircut once or twice. He stayed next door to a good friend of mine. And um, that was that. I knew Slim like that. I met Soldier Slim in KLC basement in 1993. It was awesome. It was like he was an instant little brother of mine. He had some jeans on that he had painted on. And I was like, dang, that's some sharp jeans. Where you get them jeans from? And he was like, I made them. And I was like, what? I said, your friend, your fan's fresh too. He was like, yeah, I cut my own hair. I cut hair on the project, and I was like, well, you do everything, and you rap? And he was like, yeah, watch. So we started listening to his music, and I was just blown away, because like I said, he had a delivery like no other. You know what I'm saying? Because Slim, you know, he used to be, I know him just from being in the, in the Magnolia, cutting hair. And um, he came on the parkway, we got it in. I wanted you got it with the first song we done and it, it just been there from since. He really be telling the truth, like he could really spin the cone and just be like, he gonna just put in his music, everything he do, he gonna just tell the truth. He really live like he could have seen his music before. Most of the time that's what I like before he really keeps it real. He ain't just saying anything. He just wanna knock it. Since the human though, that dude had a weird sense of humor that I really used to really just he just tripped me out, man. Like you know what I'm saying? Like this is like his, his, his comebacks really just was one of some of the best, man, you know? Rest in peace, soldier slam my dog feel, you already know. It was, it was just, you know, a natural thing, you know what I'm saying? Cause when he got in, you know, from when I seen him cutting up outside, you know, I knew I could get out of him in the actual studio and one thing that was good with him, he wasn't shy, you know what I'm saying? He got up in there, he did his thing, and um, from there, but it's it, it just a natural thing from when he came in. It, it's nothing that I really had to tell him to do. I coached him up a little bit, but his mind was already made up. He was a man of ideas. He brought a lot of ideas to the table as far as on production and all of that. So, you know, Slim was an open-minded person, you know, and I'm not going to speak about talent because it's untouched. You know, it, it's... Yeah, never get another one like him from here. What do you do? It's your girl G.I. Peaches, the cutthroat diva. I am the younger sister of Soldier Slim. I'm also a female rapper from New Orleans. Shout out to everybody that's watching right now. Coming up with Soldier Slim as a big brother was always crazy because we're so many years apart. So it's kind of like you have that big brother that also plays the role as the dad. So he's more of the discipliner. He's more of the enforcer. So we were more like father daughter rather than brother sister. That was my baby. Until he was 14 years old before I had GI features. That was my right hand person. That was my love of my life. Man, me and Slim been through so much. When I felt sad, he had my back. When he felt sad, I had his back. That's just how life works with you. It's like every time, you know, you're working on a Slim record, you know, he was a full-time comedian at the same time, so it wasn't a dull moment in the studio. And what, what made it so easy was that um, 
it was never a beat that I pulled up and he didn't have something for it because everything that I pulled up, he had something for it. So it wasn't even a question. I never questioned him on what he wrote because I knew Slim was out here. So I knew whatever he came laid on my beat was some real shit. And you cannot sit up here and tell him how to be real. You know, it's, it's just naturally in you. So he came in, he spit on my records. I mean, he spit on the beats. I had the beats, he had the lyrics. We got in the studio and just smashed out. Had fun up in there while we was doing it. And that was made it so easy for him and me. When Slim came home from doing a small Joe's, uh, I'm one of the first guys he did some feature work with while I was on the limit. You know what I'm saying? We did like two joints on my album. There was one in their family, which is certified gold, in uh, 1998. So yeah, man, we did a lot of records together, a lot of songs together, and I got to see how strong and stand-up a guy he was, you know what I'm saying? Plus, I knew his cousin, Hound from Gertown, you know? Hey, first time I heard Slim, you know, I was in the streets, like in the seven wall, you know what I'm saying, hustling, you know what I'm saying, and my dad put on a CD, you know what I'm saying, my bad, it was a tape. The dude put on a tape, you heard me, we checked it out, called, you know, Magnolia Slim, you know what I'm saying, spitting that heat rock, you heard me, all slangs, all street, you know how we living, you know, down here in New Orleans. When I would go out and people would embrace him and tell me how much they loved him, and they would tell like sentimental stories about him. Um, it made me really feel good about him because it made me feel like it wasn't one side that I just knew, it was other sides of him that they knew as well. He was sentimental with us, and then you know the outside seen him as a hard person, but he really had a soft inside. Um, I stand firm against violence really because coming from losing my brother to gun violence, and I know so many people like my best friend, her brother was killed as well. I think that when they go and do these things, families apart. You know, it's tearing everybody apart. It's tearing loved ones apart. It's kind of like, you know, parents can't really do the job that they would do normally with their kids. You know, like discipline them because they're suffering and really mourning from their child that they're not, that they're dealing with. But it, it was a moment one time when, when, when me and Slim, we was out here grinding locally, you know what I'm saying? And it was a time to where, you know, we were still coming up and coming up. And um, one time I had talked to Baby and Baby was trying to get Slim, you know what I'm saying? This is before he found BG. And um, I told Slim, man, Baby, cash money, wanna, he want to record it, man. And so I'm like, look, KLC, look, KL Funky, because he used to call me Funky B. He, look, look, he was like, look, Funky B, you know, it's all cool and all, but we're going to do this shit our fucking self, you know? You stay doing your shit, I'm going to do mine, and we're going to put our money together, we're going to put my tape out. And I'm like, you don't want to rock with it? He said, nah, man, I'm glad, you know, it's cool that Baby offered me this thing, but, man, we got to do us. We got to start our own and me and you and when he said that he gave me his loyalty and that meant everything i tell you say, dog i love you dog i miss your music i wonder what you was gonna make this time you was really cold dog you really was exclusive dog you really was like yeah you know what i'm talking about and you know who this is this pimp like me this guap man time to see to him guap you already knew I love you, dog. I miss you, R.I.P. And all I can tell you, dog, I wish you was here, right here with me. Man, bro. I love you, dog. You hear me? Absolutely. And, I, and a lot of people come to me and ask me how I do it. I told them I don't do it. I take one day at a time. But I talk to a lot of people, the psychiatrist and the grievance center. You can't do it on your own. You need help. A lot of people never lost a child don't understand where you're coming from. They think you need to be over it, you don't get over it 12 years later. Standing up here and watching everybody represent my son, that picture over there killing me. But I'm gonna do this because I know that Sim was a soldier and he wanted me to do this. But he'll say, my mom was a soldier, she a jack of all aces. She know how to handle this and that's the way I do it. But let's pray for those parents that ain't like me. That ain't strong as me to get the help that they need, they need help. We need to get centers in New Orleans to help these people make it where they got to make it. We losing a lot of children and everybody can't deal with what they have to deal with. Thank y'all for coming out. I, I just want to thank y'all. This is such an honor for to see so many people representing my son. Thank y'all.